Thanks for joining us tonight at 10. The Ole Miss campus is the latest battleground in the fight over Confederate monuments. The question now is, what's next after a vote by the student senate to move the Confederate statue from its current home? Courtney Ann Jackson has the very latest. This Confederate statue at the circle on the Ole Miss campus will get moved to the Confederate cemetery if the student government gets its way. But how legally binding is Tuesday's Associated Student Body Senate vote? Here's Mississippi College law professor Matt Steffi's take. This is the most forceful way they can respond. But if they had the authority to move the monument, it would be moved already. The state law being cited by the ASB reads the governing body may move the memorial to a more suitable location if it is determined that the location is more appropriate to displaying the monument. But the question is whether the ASB can be considered the governing body. I think it is a stretch by any criteria to call student government part of the university shared governance model unless we want to say that part is both largely symbolic and quite small, comparatively speaking. I checked in with ASB president today. He tells me the resolution will now go to the Dean of Students and Vice Chancellor of Student Affairs. If they sign off on it, it goes to the Chancellor. But then what? The IHL tells me that the institutional executive officer would decide whether it gets sent to the Board of Trustees for approval. Then the board would have to consult with the Department of Archives and History before making a call. Meanwhile, lawmakers are already reacting to the ASB vote. Some of these Confederate monuments may not be politically correct, but they're still part of our history. It shows that the university is moving in the right steps, making the right steps to make change for our state. According to the information from the IHL, it appears there's still more hurdles to be cleared before the statue can be relocated. Courtney Ann Jackson, WCBI News. Well, more revenue should be coming into Lowndes County. This after a law affecting businesses on airport property is reversed. Governor Bryant signed Senate Bill 2802 into law today. It requires businesses on airport property to pay property taxes. Now, this bill will have a big impact here in Lowndes County, where several industries are on property belonging to the Golden Triangle Regional Airport. The tax exemption had been costing the county and the Lowndes County School District hundreds of thousands of dollars. Most elected county leaders could soon be getting a pay raise. The state house and senate have passed the legislation, which is on the on the way to the governor's desk. Chancery clerks, circuit clerks, county registrars of election, tax assessors, and collectors would all see increases. Sheriffs, county medical examiners, and county supervisors would also get a raise. Senate Bill 2827 would also increase certain fees some of these office, offices charge to help pay for those costs. A Columbus man arrested by Lowndes County investigators in November has a date in federal court that's set on Friday. 29-year-old Nathaniel Vance Kyles is now facing two counts of federal indictment of possession and transportation of child pornography. Lowndes County detectives were tipped off late last year that Cowles was storing pictures and videos of children under the age of 18 simulating or having sex. A warrant led them to a Dropbox internet storage account where the pictures were located. Cowles is free on bond but cannot leave the Northern District Court boundaries. Time now to toss things over to Chief Meteorologist Keith Gibson who's got a first look at our forecast. Hey there Keith. It's got a pretty nice sunset. Look at this. Some gorgeous color earlier this evening with the setting sun and some of those wispy cirrus clouds coming on in. Speaking of the clouds, you can see them right here drifting on through. They really won't act like a blanket for us, so temperatures will continue to cool. Right now, we've got quiet conditions in the city of Columbus, already down to 27 in Oxford, 30 in Starkville, 30 at the Air Force Base, 33 for you in Tupelo. A freeze warning continues for a good chunk of the deep south tonight, so lows probably down into the mid to upper 20s, so a chilly start on our Thursday, Scott. A lot of sun, though, but clouds fill back in. We're back into the 50s. Rain returns Friday. More on that in just a few minutes. All right, thank you very much, Keith. Well, last week we brought you the story of a Columbus woman who lost everything in the recent tornado. We met Shirley Ferguson on her 57th birthday outside of her destroyed Railroad Street apartment. On that day, she felt hopeless and lost. Today, Shirley says she feels completely different. Our Dory Talley tells us why. God said, Tia, you might cry that night, but joy is going to come in the morning light, and I believe that. What a difference a week has made in Shirley Ferguson's life. 
10 days ago, she had nothing. Today, she says she is blessed with more than she could ever imagine. This smile on my face, I didn't have it last week. I said, and, the, and, and the, the love people have shown me, that will put the joy on, in, on my, in me. When we first met Shirley, her home was gone, claimed by the tornado. She was exhausted and frustrated going from agency to agency. She needed help. It was her 57th birthday, a year she woke up thinking would be her worst. But now, it's one she'll never forget. And it's because of our viewers and people from as far as Tennessee. I done had over a hundred calls. I done had um, over, I'm talking about, shoot, over around my 20 or 30 people just, just come and donate food clothes. Shirley's daughter also set up a cash app for her mom to receive donations. And because of your generosity, she's watching her dream turn into a reality. She's in the process of moving into her new home filled with what she calls blessings. I'm so happy to have a roof over my head where I can do and and see my grandkids. You no, know, yes, sit out, watch TV and you no know, we got a yard, a backyard <laughs> so they can run around and play, put them out there. And I said, oh, I said, God, you know just what I needed. Shirley says everyone, even complete strangers, leave her in awe. I would like to tell y'all thank you from the bottom of my heart because the person you see here is a whole lot different from the one that you saw a week ago. And because of you all and you showing your love to me, you just, my faith in man is restored. We're definitely happy to start seeing some smiles. Now, if you'd like to learn more about Ferguson's story, just visit our website, wcbi.com. Temperatures on the way up. I know you, on a, you really want to hear about that. Uh, showers return, though. That's the trade-off. Storms, too, on Saturday, and that may not be the only system coming our way. The full forecast is next. WCBI First Alert AccuWeather Forecast with Chief Meteorologist Keith Gibson. Happy Wednesday evening, 10-12 on our Wednesday. You can see a live view in downtown Tupelo. Traffic move along just fine. No issues at Durham's Pharmacy in West Alabama. We topped out only in the 40s today. Same story in Columbus, all clear at this point. But it will be warmer as we go throughout the next few days. But check out some of these numbers already down to 28 in Grenada, 32 in Louisville, 29 in Amory, 29 in Vernon. 20s most likely at the bus stop in the morning. Coats will be needed by the afternoon. Clouds fill back in, but temperatures will be a little bit warmer. We should be somewhere in the 50s. At this point, thinking mid to upper 50s south. Winds from the southeast at about 5 to 15 miles per hour. But the clouds will be on the increase during the day. Low to mid 50s up north, including Tupelo and Pontotoc and West Alabama. Much the same story mid to upper 50s. Maybe a little bit more sun for you. The clouds will start to come on in from the southwest a little bit sooner for those of you that live south and west of the GTR area. But notice the clouds back to the west and that energy is coming our way. Let me show you the next day or two with Futurecast tomorrow morning. We should be mainly sunny, but already some clouds coming on in from the southwest and those will spill on through the area during the day. We are going to remain dry. Showers return late Thursday night into our Friday morning, so we may see a few showers for your Friday commute into the afternoon too. A chance for some showers, maybe even a storm as some warmer air starts to infiltrate our area with those southerly breezes. Speaking of the energy, look at that. That thing will be coming on in here as we get into our Saturday, and that will give rise to the chance for some strong to severe storms across our region. We'll keep fine tuning this. Right now, all modes of severe weather are possible. We may see some storms in the morning, maybe into the afternoon and evening too. So we'll try to fine tune the timing as well starting tomorrow. But here's the big picture. A front back to the west, warm and humid air out ahead of it. We know the drill here. Showers and storms will likely be developing, maybe some heavy rain too. All of this will get out of here sometime Saturday evening with that cold front. Sunday is going to be pretty good here, so the weekend will be warmer around 70 Saturday and Sunday. Just a bit stormy and wet on Saturday. Sunday, the pick day of the weekend. Another system, though, Scott, by the middle of next week could give us more strong storms, so pretty active here for the next week.
That time of year. Thank you very much, Keith. Well, Shakespeare once wrote, All the world's a stage. And it's that idea that drives our educator of the week. Celsi Staggers teaches drama and music at Annunciation Catholic School here in Columbus. Staggers says she would love for all her students to grow up and become actors and actresses. But for now, she just wants to build their confidence and get them ready for the spotlight, whether it's on the stage or in the real world. You start with their eyes down and we'll say three, two, one, look, and they look up and they lock eyes with someone and they can't move their eyes. But if the person staring back at them that they're staring at, then they have to go ah, and do a dramatic drop to the floor. It's called look scream. The Staggers class presents Willy Wonka on April 4th and the 5th. To nominate your favorite teacher, just visit WCBI.com. WCBI's Educator of the Week is brought to you by Food Giant, where your neighbors are the owners. Welcome back, everyone. Maternal infant bonding is a vital process which begins in the early in early stages of infancy. We'll learn more tonight in our Health Talk with Baptist. Hi, I'm Susan Spencer, Director of Women's Services at Baptist Memorial Hospital Golden Triangle. Tonight we will discuss Baptist baby friendly designation and the best way to get mother infant bonding off to a good start. The need for early bonding is well recognized by obstetrical, pediatric medical and nursing research. At Baptist Hospital, we encourage skin to skin contact for at least the first hour after birth and as desired by the mother. This provides quiet time for mother and baby to get to know each other Many infants will make their own way to the breast and most will breastfeed if given this opportunity in the first 60 to 90 minutes. Babies who breastfeed early have fewer problems with breastfeeding in the following days. We encourage mothers to keep their babies in the room with them throughout the hospital stay, regardless of the method of feeding. We often hear that mothers are tired after giving birth while they're expected to keep their babies with them. Studies actually show that mothers rest better when the babies are with them. It's an important time for mothers and babies to learn about each other. They learn to recognize and respond to smells and cues. What better place than in the supportive environment and care of our well-trained staff? We believe this sets them up for the greatest success when they are discharged home and on their own. Join us next time for Health Talk with Baptist when we discuss how exclusive breastfeeding can help mothers achieve their breastfeeding goals. Mail your topic suggestions to Health Talk at WCBI.com. Health Talk has been brought to you by Baptist Memorial Hospital Golden Triangle. Teams continue to battle in Jackson with the hopes of a title and a trophy. Highlights from high school basketball semifinals coming up next in sports. Sports with Courtney Robb. The SEC tournament tipping off with an early matchup between Florida and Ole Miss. Even though the Rebels were able to top the Gators once before the season, they were not able to do the same today. And one final loss ended an overall difficult season for Ole Miss. WCBI Sports Tom Ebel reports from Greenville, South Carolina with more. 
Courtney turnovers and blown defensive assignments plagued Ole Miss in the loss to Florida, but you can't say it wasn't a close game. 18 to 16 at halftime, neither team shooting more than 30% from the field, but it was the third quarter that changed everything around. Florida outscoring Ole Miss 25 to 14, ending the quarter on a 10 to 2 run. So now year one is in the books for head coach Yolette McPhee McEwen. Obviously, she was given an almost impossible situation in the offseason. Two players left on the roster after the entire team transferred. So her and her staff building a team of transfers and freshmen and tripling their SEC win total from a year ago. While the season didn't go as Coach Yo planned, she said there's a lot of positives to build on for the future. Although this loss sucks, it ended as it probably should. You know, a team that got put together with two seconds left on the shot clock. And through it, we spoiled some people's agendas and, and won some games. I think they won one game last year in the regular season. So, I mean, and we, I mean, we had a lot of good times. I got an opportunity to play in one of the best conferences in the land. And um, we played against some of the top teams, Mississippi State. We played against, you know, some of the top teams such as Kentucky. And we ended up beating them at their home floor. So there's a lot of accomplishments that we've had this season. I know it didn't end out the way I wanted it to end, the way we wanted it to end. Coach O saying after the game that she'll be hitting the recruiting trail on Thursday as she looks to continue to rebuild Ole Miss women's basketball. For those of you with viewing interest, Mississippi State won't be playing until Friday, but 11 a.m. on Thursday, Tennessee taking on LSU. The winner of that game will advance to take on the one seed Bulldogs on Friday. We'll catch up with Vic Schaefer and company for their practice coming up on Thursday. We'll have much more throughout this week of the SEC Women's Basketball Tournament here in Greenville, South Carolina. Reporting here in Bon Secure Wellness Arena in Greenville, Tom Ebel for WCBI Sports. Courtney, we'll send it back to you in Columbus. Thank you, Tom. Well, let's get to some high school ball action in Jackson for the 6A semifinals. First quarter, the Golden Wave rebound. Fabian Perry outlets to Anthony Nichols with the snag spin and finish. Tupelo down by three. Now Tupelo on the break. Fabian Perry, the give and go action with Braxton Bishop as Perry finishes at the rim. The Golden Wave down by eight at the end of the first. The second quarter, Meridian in transition. Traymond Pittman puts on the wheels and attacks the hoop. Misses, but McKeem Robert there for the two-hand putback slam. Wildcats go up 14, and Tupelo's Mason Gary recovers the ball, puts up the baseline floater. Golden Wave down by 15. They would cut the deficit to single digits in the third, but Meridian was just way too much. The road ends here for Tupelo. Meridian tops the Golden Wave with a final of 64 to 43. Some more 6A battle action. Starkville taking on Brandon in the semifinal matchup. First quarter, Jamarian Brown throws the ball ahead to Jamarvius Phillips, who puts on the spin cycle. And the Yellow Jackets trail by three. Second quarter, Jackets ball. Atavius Jones catches it down low, but finds Eric Green open on the wing for the triple. It'd be a tied ball game from there. Next, Yellow Jacket possession. Atavius Jones down low, goes to work and scores. Starkville now leading by two, and later in that second quarter, Colty Young driving, kicks to Trey Jackson, who makes the extra pass to Forte Pratter, who gets the splash. Yellow Jackets now leading by six, and then before the half, Brandon Ball, Justin Coleman isolation, breaks the defender off and scores the fillet, layup at the rim. Starkville will stay alive over the Yellow Jackets, or Starkville stays alive over Brandon, rather, a final of 64 to 61. Starkville and Meridian will play for the 6A championship on Saturday. Quickly, some baseball action. Number 7 MSU beating Arkansas on Pine Bluff 14 to 1. And then number 10 Ole Miss loses to ECU with a final of 3 to 2. That's it for sports. Your last look is coming up after the break. Stick with us. WCBI Sports Co. Here's our seven day forecast. You can see we're back in the 50s tomorrow. Clouds increase though, so not quite as bright. 65 on Friday, more showers around the region. We may see some strong storms Saturday. That's our next active weather maker. Maybe another one next week. It's our busy time of year, Scott. I was about so to get say, ready. It's that time for Wrapping everyone just to mm -hmm. keep a watch out. We will. All right, thank you very much, Keith. Thanks for watching, everyone. Have a good night. We'll see you tomorrow.